Test, test, test. Ja, das ist gar nicht locker. Hast du? Ah ja, okay. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Um, hi, and uh, thanks for coming to our session. Welcome. Um, today we're going to be talking about the uh, new features of ABAP Core Data Services, or ABAP CDS for short. My name is Konrad Gaddis, and with me is Andrea Schlottauer. We're both technical writers at SAP, uh, and our aim is to bring you uh, news about software development uh, here at SAP. So again, this uh, session is about the new features of ABAP Core Data Services. Um, and uh, ABAP Core Data Services is the gold standard for modeling in ABAP Cloud uh, and is an area in which SAP is investing heavily into. Um, we hope you enjoy the session. So on the agenda today, uh, first of all, we'll talk about the role of ABAP CDS in the ABAP Cloud development model. And then we'll introduce the new features uh, that were newly added with the 2023 release. Um, namely CDS simple types, CDS enumerated types, and um, scalar functions. And finally, we'll give you an outlook on the new features on the horizon, as well as um, some knowledge resources for those that want to know more. Uh, so let's look at the role of ABAP CDS in the ABAP cloud development model. Um, so ABAP CDS is the foundation for service-based use cases. Um, the RESTful application programming model, for instance, um, I'm sure you've all heard of that, RAP. Um, it can also be used for the multidimensional data models and analytical reports. Um, it can also be uh, used for local consumption uh, use cases via different scenarios that you see here, uh, ABAP SQL, um, other CDS aspect uh, objects, and uh, AMDP, for instance. Um, yep. And we just want to give you a brief overview of the uh, supported CDS uh, entity types organized by their category. So uh, ABAP CDS started out with CDS views, but over the years has gained various uh, improvements such as table functions, hierarchies. Um, your, you can extend view, uh, view entities and other entities um, with modification-free extensions. Um, yeah, but I'm sure you know all of that and that's why you're here. You wanna know the new stuff. So uh, today we're gonna be talking about um, CDS simple types. Uh, the enumerated types and the scalar functions, and we've highlighted those here. So uh, let's get started with the new features we want to highlight, the new kids on the block, uh, starting with CDS simple types. So CDS simple types are user-defined elementary data types uh, that are defined natively in ABAP CDS, and um, they combine the main features of data, data elements and domains in one homogeneous concept. And they obviously bring with them all the CDS qualities, such as annotations, annotation propagation, um, and integration with ABAP Cloud uh, frameworks. Here you can see a comparison of the old data, uh, data elements and CDS simple types. Um, so data, data elements can be used for typing in the ABAP dictionary, for example, for the fields of database tables and for typing in CDS and ABAP. Simple types, on the other hand, uh, can be used in type, uh, for typing in CDS and ABAP, but not for not in ABAP dictionary. Um, CDS, uh, sorry, data elements are maintained in a form-based editor in SE11. CDS simple types, on the other hand, are defined uh, in CDS source code in ABAP development tools, and their metadata is specified uh, using CDS annotations. Uh, data elements are supported by technologies such as WebDinPro and SAPGUI, and CDS simple types are evaluated by frameworks um, such as the RAP query engine and the analytical engine. So they are connected to the ABAP Cloud frameworks. So I wanted to switch into ADT. I hope that goes well with the microphone. So uh, here we can see a simple type. Yeah. Right. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so in order to uh, create a new simple type, you right click on core data services and then new and then type. And then you have the uh, syntax 
that is a defined type. And obviously I have to give it a name. So here, demo simple type. Um, so this one's based on a built-in type, int4, for example. Um, and we can see some annotations, ABC, my label, la la. These might be coming up later, so remember them. Um, I can also have a simple type based on a data, data element. Um, so we, here we have a demo simple type DE, um, and it's based on the data element demo destination. Um, and then this one is not one. So it inherits the um, some field labels that are automatically inherited uh, by the simple type. As you can see, uh, they've been very creatively described with all these sets here. Yep. And that I can close. Um, and then we want to show the nesting of simple types. So you can base one simple type on another simple type. Um, and it inherits the uh, specification and metadata. So you have in four that's based on the demo simple type that we saw earlier. Um, and then it inherits the uh, the metadata as well. If we see here. Um, so. Okay. So, um, and uh, this is using the simple type in a view with uh, parameters. So this parameter P1 is uh, defined with demo simple type. And then we also have uh, cast um, into a simple type. And then we just wanna see the active annotations with this. So we just go to open with active annotations. Difficult to do it with one hand, so. <laughs> So if we scroll down, um, yep. So we didn't define these annotations within the view itself, but rather within the simple type, um, and they're propagated to the view then. Um, yep. And so, yeah, here you can see the the annotations that we defined earlier. And for this, we've def defined a uh, service definition and a service binding that we just want to show the preview for. Good, so. All oh, right, it's already opened. Um, and if we select all the fields, and give an input, then we see a result. Um, and then these labels and the uh, tooltips come from the annotations that were defined within the simple type. Thank you, Andrea. You're welcome. Um, and then furthermore, we can, we just wanted to showcase uh, using a simple type within ABAP. So we have a report here, BT ABAP conf, um, and we've de defined a uh, type, my type, based on demo simple type. And that's a quick summary of CDS simple types. And uh, with that, I hand over to Andrea for enumerated types. Thank you, Conrad. So simple types are a way to define um, na CDS native data types. And there's um, there's another CDS native data type um, that's user defined, which is CDS enumerated, the CDS enumerated type. Um, it was also released with the last on-premise release. Um, enumerated types are available in other programming languages as well. So you're perhaps familiar with the concept. An enumerated type defines um, a fixed set of predefined values and a data object um, defined with reference to an enumerated type can only have one of these um, fixed values. So an enumerated type contributes to type safety and data consistency and allows um, allows syntax checks at compile time. Um, in ABAP, there have been enumerated types before or enumerations. One means to specify enumerations in ABAP was DDIC domains with fixed values. Um, 
And like CDS enumerated types, um, they are defined in a global metadata repository and you can address them from and re reuse them in different programs. However, they are connected to frameworks such as um, DINPRO and in ABAP code, you cannot address the individual components um, of, a fix, of a domain with a fixed value. In the ABAP programming language, we had enumeration since release 751. Here's an example of an enumeration in ABAP. Um, you define a type with the statement begin of enum. Then you can write a structure, which is optional and a, optionally a base type. And then you define a list of enumerated constants. In this case, it's the days of the week. And these enumerations are available in the local context. But of course, you can encapsulate them in an interface with a higher visibility. Um, yeah, and the CDS enumerations are by default globally available and they leverage the um, CDS qualities. For example, we can specify um, metadata with CDS annotations and they are supported by the ABAP cloud frameworks such as the ABAP analytical engine and RAP does not yet support them, but that will come later. Um, to define an enumerated type is the same like a simple type. It's, it's a CDS object of the type CDS type. Um, so it has its own category and its own editor. And the syntax is define type enum. And yeah, you define a base type. This base type determines um, the enumerated values that you can assign. And then you define a list of constants and each constant is assigned a value. Again, we have the days of the week here. Uh, you can specify metadata such as text labels on header level or for the individual constants. So we see on an OData UI, we would see the text label Monday. So you have more flexibility and you can assign longer labels and exactly one of the constants must be assigned the value initial and then it's filled with the initial value um, of the base type. It's also possible to nest enumerated types. So I, this enumerated type demo CS enum stack is defined with reference to another enumerated type and it inherits the complete definition and the metadata. So if I open the code element information with the F2 button, I see the constants and the values, the base type and also the metadata. And next I will show you how to use enumerated types in a view entity. So here we have a CDS view entity um, and the input parameter P weekday um, is defined based on the enumerated type weekday. And then we can also cast elements into our enumerated type. Um, and we can include the individual constants in the select list, um, as you can see in line 13. We specify the name of the type with a dot, a hash character, and then the name of the enumerated constant. 
and I open the data preview now. And for the parameter, I get a list with the allowed values. So nothing can go wrong here. And we can also use enumerations in ABAP code. For example, um, here the data object WD is typed with reference to a CDS enumerated type. Um, and an assert compares the content um, of WD with an enumerated um, constant, Monday in this case, um, to address an enumerated constant, we use a component selector. So that's different than in CDS. And here, um, the, by default, the initial value, so I don't specify any um, particular constant. So automatically, it's the initial value, which is Monday. So the assert would succeed in this case. And next, I will show you how to use an enumerated type in a select statement in ABAP SQL. Um, in line, so we have a select statement, line 23. And in the where clause, um, a field typed with an enumerated type is compared to an enumerated constant, and it's um, addressed like a host variable with the add character. And when I open the code element information, the data type here is displayed as enum. It's not the base type, but it's the type enum. Um, yeah, and in line 31, it's also parameter passing. So the um, parameter p weekday is assigned to enumerated constant with the add sign and the component selector. Um, and that's all for enumerated types. So at, they can be used for typing in CDS and in ABAP, but not in ABAP dictionary. And in, at the moment, it's not possible to define database tables um, with reference or with an enumerated type, but in the future, there will be successes to DEDIC database tables, um, CDS table entities, and they will then, an advantage will be that they can be typed with enumerated types also. And the last new feature that we brought today are CDS scalar functions. The scalar function is a function um, that accepts multiple input parameters and returns exactly one scalar value. They are like the built-in functions that we know from ABAP SQL and from CDS, like um, concat, for example, or division. So SAP provides a set of these built-in scalar functions, but with CLS scalar functions, um, developers are enabled to encapsulate their own coding into this CDS object and then reuse it in different CDS entities and in ABAP coding. And the scalar function is linked with an AMDP method. So, and the logic is, um, programmed in yeah, natively on the SAP HANA database in SQL script. So you have all the native SQL statements at hand. Um, so that's another, yeah, like CD, before we had these table functions that were implemented in SQL script on the database. And the main difference between scalar functions and table functions is that table functions return a tabular result and scalar functions return only one scalar value. Um, and we will now I will now demonstrate how to implement 
and use a scalar function with an example. Um, so let's imagine we are a company and we deliver packages from logistic centers to customers and we want to calculate um, whether a delivery incurs any import duty using a scalar function. So we have information spread across different database tables about customers and logistic centers. Um, and if both the customer and the logistic center is in the European Union, there's no import duty. But if one of them is not a member of the European Union, we have to pay import duty. And we will implement the scalar function determine import duty. It has two import parameters, distributor ID and customer ID, to identify a distributor and a customer, and then indicate whether or not we pay any import duty. To define a scalar function, we need three repository objects. Um, we need a scalar function definition, which is a CDS object. It defines a list of input parameters and the data type of the return value. Um, and this is the parameter interface for the AMDP implementation later on. Um, as a second step, we have a scalar function implementation reference um, that's defined in a form-based editor in ABAP development tools. And it, the main task is to specify an AMDP class and AMDP method um, where the calculation takes place. And then there's an AMDP function implementation where the scalar function is implemented in SQL script natively on the database. Um, here we see a view entity. Um, that selects data from a customer table and also from it joins a distributor table. And then it, it selects some details about customer and distributor. I open the data preview now. And I see a, um, a record of a customer, Jane Doe, who is located in the US and um, she has ordered some um, a package with from Austria. So the, the delivery takes place between Austria and the US and we want to add a column to this result set um, that tells us whether this delivery incurs import duty. Um, so scalar functions are again a new kind of CDS object. You find them here under, under scalar function definition. Um, and then the syntax is define scalar function. Then there's a list of input parameters. In our case, we identify a distributor and a customer via their ID and for an ID value, the data type in two is suitable and the return value is Boolean, just yes or no. Next, we need a scalar function implementation reference. I open that as, um, now we can create that with the button new scalar function implementation reference. And also in the project explorer, um, it's connected to the definition. The name of this object is always the same um, as the definition plus the suffix SQL. And then here in this field, AMDP reference, 
there's the name of an AMDP class <clears throat> and an AMDP method. Um, this is the class packaging information where the logic is implemented. Um, it's, we know that it's an AMDP class because it implements the AMDP marker interface. And in the method definition, it uses the syntax for scalar function to bind it to the scalar function definition. And it takes its parameter interface um, from the definition. So the input parameters are here used as importing parameters and the return value is Boolean or the result in this case. Um, the method implementation then um, uses the usual additions for AMDP method by database function for HANA database, <clears throat> language SQL script and options read only. In the using list, it specifies the view entities that will be used, where the data is selected from. And then first of all, it declares some variables um, where the results are stored. And then um, there are some select statements um, that select the country where a um, customer is located, the country where the logistics center is located, and whether these countries are members of the European Union. And with an if statement, um, the return parameter result is filled. So if both are member of the European Union, um, it's empty. And if one is member of the European Union and one is not, um, an X is entered, and that means that their import duty must be paid. Um, it's just a support. I don't think so. I think no, not that I'm aware of. Um, you mean the object that can be specified in the using list? Um, so as far as I know, you in ABAP Cloud, you cannot use database tables, but only view entities or CDS entities that are released as released APIs. Yeah. Um, no, I, am, I don't think so. Um, did you understand that or you can only use released objects, yeah. Um. So I'm, 
I can't answer this question. My colleague told me, yes, the client is considered, but I'm not an expert on that topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This seems to be mm -hmm. the most important time. Mm -hmm. There are normal MDD. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry, but I, I'm not an expert on that. You have to consider that here SQL script is used. And for example, the question regarding the uh, release table, you can only use the table defined in the using clause. And there you can only specify SAP release objects. Of course, you can specify your custom tables there, but regarding SAP object, only the release. And all this script is then generated on the HANA as a HANA artifact. That means this is processed on the database and from the performance, you will fully use the uh, power of the SQL HANA data. Operations around here, a lot of small operations. Yeah, okay. So if you have a, like, a large table, I assume this is worse, but I don't know. This is just a demo example. Of course, when you will be writing yeah, the code, then you will also decide whether to use this. I think it's a great feature. Coupling mm -hmm. functionality, but um, I think we have to be careful when to use it. Yes. Assume. Yeah, I don't always. <laughs> always. You are fully correct. And most of the time, such things will always also be used for things you can do in CDS natively, or you want to access HANA native functionalities then you will use such functionality or you have a complex logic that you want to implement. Then you will op implement and optimize code and put it there. So you are right, but this is general for every SQL statement we write, yeah. you have to make it performance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when is this available? Um, 2308 and 2023, so it's all Um, Thank you, Cheryl. Um, yes, of course. Yeah, sure. It's also linked on the slides. Yeah. Why? <laughs> you mean this? The view, or you mean the function definition? You mean this scalar function definition? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Um, so it's here, determine import duty. Mm -hmm. um, you mean in general AMDPs or you mean encapsulated in CDS entities? Or AMDPs in general, ABAP. Um, does any SAP colleague in the room know about it? <laughs> the thing is with the ABAP managed database procedure, it's very low level, like Karin just mentioned, it's very low level statement. 
um, being only used for very data intensive and push down kind of logic, as we all know. Um, so you need to treat it with a lot of a lot of importance and a lot of diligence, so to speak. The, the, the second thing is, could it play a role in clean core to the extent, yes, as, as, as long as we work here with released object, this is a system which is on-premise. No? So it's uh, the UI, UI a is, not, is not a cloud system, so it uh, accepts basically all. Um, uh, and uh, if you go for clean core, for up cloud only, then, of course, we need the full concept of released objects, both in the right sense, which is now also possible with uh, our managed database procedures, but uh, uh, in the read sense, but we also need it for the right sense. Yeah? So we need it in both directions, and that's not yet available. So I would say for the time being, uh, Karin, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, oh, it's available now. The, the, the right, right or AMDP is also possible. I, I better hand over to Karin. No, no, I just had to check, but IMDP at the beginning, it was not released, but it is released. It's part of the documentation. The ABAP managed database proce procedures has the difference that you can write with them. So they are supported, but not as part of CDS. In the CDS part, we only have read-only IMDP-based objects, like the table functions or the Scala functions. We are just read-only because we are in a view. But the, for the other scenarios, right, they are supported in the meantime. What? Sorry. Um, sorry, there was a question about. Um, could you please repeat your question? Okay, yeah, virtual elements. Yeah. But virtual elements are evaluated only by the wrap query engine. They are only evaluated in the context of wrap. Um, and these scalar functions can be used in general ABAP as well. And they, I think they have a different use case. A virtual element is implemented in ABAP. This is implemented natively in AMDP. And also this is, um, yeah, you can use it in the CDS view entity and then stack other view entities on top of it. So they have different use cases, I think. Um, and sorry, there was another question, sorry. Um, you mean if to add a where clause and filter for yeah. this import duty? Um, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Special, special, we can say, but the core purpose of CDS is to delegate the data intensive to the database. So we are sure but the HANA database is has the, the power to, to process and speedly. But of course, whether we are working on HANA or on any DB, we have to make our SQL code performance. So there are some guidelines of that. Those Scala function will be different than any other purpose. It's delegated to the database, it's processed, and the data uh, are fetched then. Okay, but the plan, plan on the hey, 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 the the hey, the hey, the the hey, the the hey, then if you have very big uh, tables, it will uh, Yeah, I, I think this is maybe a question we can handle offline, but there are also some guidelines regarding uh, best practices uh, when working with CDS, which are available online. Yeah, I think this should be taken offline then. Um, and if it's okay for you, we have just two more slides, um, roadmap <laughs> and material. And if we still have time, um, you can ask your questions. So, because there are so many new cool features coming, Conrad. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, Andrea. Um, yeah, so uh, we just want to look to the future and give you a glimpse of uh, what's what's coming in the future. Um, so next is planned uh, CDS aspects. Um, and so these are uh, reuse components of view entities. Um, you can imagine them like uh, ABAP dictionary include structures. Um, they allow you to split entity definitions into parts um, that you can then obviously reuse. Um, and it's uh, borrowed from aspects like um, uh, aspect-oriented programming. Then we have uh, external entities that establish uh, secondary connections uh, from AS ABAP to secondary database uh, systems. And this is similar to ADBC in ABAP. Um, then we have the buffering concept that's going to be, um, so the, the buffer propagation and buffer delegation. Um, so that's further advanced and uh, these further optimize the runtime. Um, and then a very big new feature that's coming in the future, CDS table entities. Um, yep, uh, replace uh, data, um, database tables essentially. Um, and they, they'll bring with them all the CDS qualities like uh, annotations, annotation propagation, all that. Um, and finally, um, that's a little bit uh, down the road. Uh, we'll, we'll be introducing uh, writable views for write access to database tables. Um, they won't just have a read-only because CDS views only have read-only right now. Um, and some further <laughs> resources. Some of these were already mentioned. Um, so we have, uh, I don't know if you want to, yeah, be easier. I uh, just want to showcase a couple of the resources. Um, some of them are on the uh, keyword documentation. Hopefully, uh, most of you know that. Um, first of all, we have a guide. So this isn't keyword documentation, but uh, we have a guide, end-to-end -end guide, um, ABAP data models guide. This explains to you the different um, CDS entities and how to use them. And it was also fairly recently released. So it's some news. Maybe you want to check it out. Yep. And then next we have, what's next? Oh, you want to say okay. something? To highlight our work because we're a little bit proud on it. So we have featured tables for CDS, which list all the CDS features plus the release dates as part of the ABAP keyword documentation. And um, we have a CDS glossary with all CDS, ABAP CDS terms and their definitions. And we have a cheat sheet for ABAP CDS. Um, yeah, Brandeis has theirs. They've presented it to us before, but we have our own also, um, which with the tables about all CDS objects, entities, and all the cool features with links to the documentation. Yeah, and that's all from our side. Thanks for listening. Oh my God, where to start? I don't know. As far as I can see from the documentation, we have also AMDP as part of the ABAP cloud uh, now, so it's released. And this is also the AMDP framework, which is used uh, uh, for Scala functions or for table functions, which are part of the um, clean core ABAP cloud at the end of the day. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. We have an official ABAP roadmap um, on Help Portal. So you find some, evidently, um, some fixed release dates there that, is ABAP, um, that SAP has committed to. And it's also linked in the presentation. So, for example, the external entities will be made available with the next release. Uh, 2408 in August. And so here, that's where you can find it. And basically, these features are 2408, table entities are 2502, and writable views 2508 according to the roadmap. I mean, sorry, yeah, please, and last row.
What do you mean with same file? Oh, no, it's only one CDS object has one type definition. Each type has an own definition. Yeah. Um, I cannot make any commitment. Yeah, perhaps it will be made available in Fiori applications, but we don't, it's not part of our official roadmap, so I cannot make any commitment. Okay, I'm not an expert on that one, sorry. Yeah, please. I think it's right for the, but in the future, but uh, major refactoring is expected to go. Um, I see our product owner shaking his head, so no plans yet. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, so I already heard this question before, so I already checked with my colleagues. Currently, it's not supported. You don't get any value help for free at Fury UIs currently. Maybe future, who knows, but at the moment, no. Not on the roadmap. And that's a very specific question about um, the maintenance tools for CDS table entities. Um, I honestly don't know the exact details what they will do with this. So sorry, I don't know about the maintenance right now. Can't tell you, sorry. Um, yes, please. So you, I only heard um, about you you're asking about analytics. But I, is your question about analytical modeling in CDS? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. Sorry, yeah. Um, okay, then thanks all for your attention. I think we are already exceeded the time. Ich habe geschlagen, dann kann ich meine Frage privat stellen. Ja. CDS View Hierarchie. Mhm. Ich kann vom Blatt bis zum